and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Secretary, please call the roll. Chairman Judd? Here. Commissioner Scatini? Here. Machado? Here. Houston? Here. Sanceri? Here. Martinez? Here. I am here and I will mark uh, Mr. Meyer absent. Okay. A verification of agenda posting. The agenda for the Airport Advisory Commission of the City Hall is to regular meeting of February 24, 2016 was posted on the bulletin board at City Hall on February 16th at 10 a.m. per Government Code Section 54954.2. Okay. Uh, we have a consent agenda of, to approve the minutes of the meeting of January 27th. Uh, so moved. Okay, it's been moved to approve. Second. Okay, that's uh, Gordon and Robbie. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Okay. Next item is public input. Uh, this is a time when anyone who wants to speak on any topic that's not on the agenda may do so. Ruth. Hi, Ruth Erickson Hollister. I'm not sure if it's your board or, or and the city council that we need to have permission from. Um, the Hollister Airmen's Association this year is 70 years old. So we have various um, activities and events planned. One of them we would like to do is to place another plaque next to George Houston's plaque, which is right next to uh, Dave's um, hangar. We'd like to put put a plaque there <clears throat> uh, for Elmer Harmon, who actually was the first airport manager. He started the Hollister Flying Club, and for one dollar a year, he made an agreement with the council to, um, he would be the airport manager for one dollar a year if he could have the Hollister Flying Club out of the airport. So, unfortunately, of course, he has gone. The two sons, one who lived in Salinas and one who lived in Arizona, have gone. And there is only now <clears throat> uh, the wife of one of the sons who lives in Salinas. And we'd like to do it, obviously, while she's still with us. So I don't know if I need to ask the Airport Advisory Commission or do I have to ask the council? Just work with me. Work with you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other comments or cards or anything? Thank you, Ruth. Um, item seven is reports. Seven A is Super Bowl update. So uh, this is the first meeting we are having since the Super Bowl. Um, we, I'm gonna call what we did successful. Um, we had 12 aircraft um, here for Super Bowl. I believe 11 of those came in on the day of, and I think we had one spend a couple nights. Um, uh, all the feedback we received from the um, owners of the planes that, that came in was good. Um, as, as Dave was saying earlier, they came in with very low expectations of Hollister and we knocked their socks off. Um, we really did. I, and a good time was had by all. I heard some of the stories of the returning uh, uh, things we did benefit from the fact they were all Denver Bronco fans we didn't have any Carolina Panther fans or the, that would have been a mess um, I, I, I went out a couple times um, I did take a picture and I'll, I'll make sure I show it at the next meeting um, I apologize for that I've been running around lately uh, um, so all in all I think we were successful I can tell you that we have more planes in Watsonville Monterey Salinas um, Reed Hillview and South County Really? Uh, yeah, we had about twice as many of all those places. Oh, really? um, Reed Hillview told me they lost fifty thousand dollars over Super Bowl, that they had uh, spent that amount of money and they needed a hundred planes 
to break even, and uh, they did not get it. They had two. How many plots did they have? Uh, they had four. Monterey? They had four, according to Mr. Lindsay. I had lunch with them yesterday. Hmm. Wow. Hmm. So, all in all, I think we were very su successful. I can tell hmm. you that the numbers were way lower than what the FAA was expecting. And my theory on that is it's a, it's a, um, I, the reason is because of the teams that won. Um, I believe two less popular teams that didn't have as big corporate followings won this year. Um, so they didn't have the huge influx of jet traffic that the New England Patriots, the New York Giants, and some of these more metropolitan teams, the Miami Dolphins, would have. Um, so uh, it could have been a lot worse. It could have been the Niners and the Raiders. Um, <laughs> I felt a lot better after about the third game in the season because I knew that wasn't going to happen. But uh, um, that was my nightmare going into this year. But uh, all in all, I'd say we were successful. Okay, thank you. Any other any thank questions? Or, or, <laughs> Still, you said we have 12 or so airplanes compared to Watsonville at four? That is correct. Yeah, I noticed on the TV channels they had all kinds of promotional things. Big yeah, Watsonville there. actually bought a new tug for uh, Super Bowl. Um, I'm sure big, they needed a new tug anyway, but... Yeah, but they had but, big baskets for every plane that came in. And, they did. So what, what, what I guess, I guess what I'm getting at... What's your analysis why we got 12? Because we're closer than the other three or four? Um, actually, in 8C, I'm going to talk about part of the reason why um, sure. I think we got that. Um, I do believe that AAA or the um, NBAA event contributed. I really do. Um, I think uh, our website really helped, and I'm going to go over those numbers also in 8C. Um, so, and... I mean, logically, if you look at the sectional, we were the ideal airport for the event. Um, it's a straight shot up in there. Um, what even made it more ideal was the FAA was pushing everybody to the north, and they came to the south. I think people coming from the event got down here way faster than they thought they would leave in the event, correct? That's what they said. Yeah. They, they so, said it took them 45 minutes to get from San Jose to here. Yeah, so the traffic... The traffic was all going north, um, so th those yeah, people that had that insight really benefited. Or, from or it. east, right? North or east? Yeah. Both yeah. yeah. Do you have any idea what the makeup of the airplanes were? Not makeup in the plane, but per se, but the people, corporate. They were the majority of them were corporate. Uh, we had a owner of a vodka company. Um, I heard a rumor that the owner of. Uh, a supplement that sold on TV was <laughs> one of our planes. Correct. Um, so um, may or it may was, not be it was, next year. It was a different group. It was across the board, but primarily they were all corporate. When I showed up out there um, at about eleven, I saw a whole bunch of people get off one plane and get in a bus. So um, I'm sure it was corporate plus family. Mm -hmm. Well, my, my hope on the whole activity was that we had a corporate people flying in, circulating over the airport and seeing the available property for new industry. And we also provided with everybody who came in our information, the brochure on the airport, and also Mr. Lindsay's information was in there also. Yeah, there was a lot of comments about how beautiful the area was coming in. Mm -hmm. You know, most of them came in direct over the Pinochet VOR, so... They got to see South County and all that. Unfortunately, the hills were green this year. Yeah, I was going to say that. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, um, so it sounds like comparatively it was a huge success. Um, I, I guess, what, what, Reed Hillview, was it the short runway that kept people out? I mean, I, would, I mean, it's a way closer than we are. San Jose kept the people out. Um, San Jose... Uh, the way the whole event worked was it was decided they're having the event. San Jose, San Francisco, and Oakland airports 
got to them first and said, we, we want the lion's share of traffic. Yeah. After that, they went to their, uh, it's, it's called BAG, Bay Area Association of Governments. And so they pushed the other Bay Area airports, Hayward, Livermore, uh, Sonoma, Napa. They really weren't pushing the South County Airport or Reed Hillview because of the proximity of San Jose. Departure slots from those two airports would have been departing the same direction as San Jose and would have affected San Jose's numbers. So the FAA lowered their rate so much. I think they only had two an hour, right, out of both of those places. So they can only get two airplanes out an hour. Um, hmm. We had four, four an hour, I think, three or four. Um, I think that's right. So, um, so you just scared them off. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. And, and where our problem was, Watsonville's problem was, Salinas is we're not a member of BAG. We're not in the nine county Bay Area. Right. So there was no, we had no representatives at the table to say, hey, share. Okay. It's a bag. It's not the bag. How many aircraft did they get? Four. A bag. Huh? Yeah, he said bag. Yeah. Pretty yeah, amazing. When, okay. Well, anyway. I know Oakland was expecting 400 and Livermore was expecting 300. And they got? I have no idea. They did not share, choose to share their information with us. 150 at Livermore? Wow. Well, that's, that's a lot still. Yeah, two new cities. Half of what they expected. And it took the two o'clock in the morning to get them out. The FAA pushed everybody that direction, which was unfortunate. I think if the event comes back, I think we've demonstrated the ability to handle it, and I think we made a name for ourselves. So I would expect that we would be treated a little Different. more um, respectably if we walk up to the table. I think there was a little of a, there, uh, those are the country boys from Hollister. They don't know what they can do, but we know what we can do. We can take care of business. There's a lot of alcohol consumed during the Super Bowl, so that did not occur. <laughs> <laughs> we were lucky to get them in the planes and out of there. Uh, we had departures, I want to say, up to 11, 11 o'clock. Yeah, 11.30 was the last one that left. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There's nothing else on that topic. Uh, item 7B, mowing slash spraying. Um, spraying operations for weeds uh, were completed. I got that done before the last rain, which was awesome. So... Um, the, the spray that we use requires a bit of rain to give us that long uh, three to six month kill time. So it worked out perfectly. Um, it's always a bit of a gamble uh, when you use that stuff because it's a lot of money um, every tank that we're putting that stuff out. Uh, we're not going to use that anymore um, starting uh, now. Uh, we're going to stop using the, the pre-emergent in March just because of how much money it costs. And I can't guarantee you that we're going to get the rain within the 45-day window to get it in there to make it work. So we will be continuing to spray with Roundup as needed. Um, the issue with Roundup is there's no long-term kill. It kills what's there at that time. Um, we have begun mowing. Um, we had some issues with the tractor. Uh, uh, radiator hose uh, rubbed on the radiator and went through. Um, and uh, we had uh, a seal problem between the reservoir uh, the coolant reservoir and the radiator also. So uh, we got those resolved, um, and uh, I was actually out today mowing in a shirt tie. Uh, <laughs> I got the inside of the airport mowed, and then the uh, next couple days I'll be uh, mowing the runways pretty heavily. So, Okay. Anybody have any questions or comments? 
Okay, item 8 is old business, and item 8A is AIP, Runway 1331 Reconstruction Project, Phase 1 and 2. Um, so, so on Phase 1, uh, that was the uh, last year's project. Uh, we did meet with in closed session with the City Council and uh, brief them on the situations with that. Um, uh, that is currently... Um, being handled by uh, other people in the city organization right now. Um, as far as phase two, uh, it began today at 5 a.m. Um, we closed 3-1. We took five core samples, um, patched that, and while the runway was closed, uh, I made sure that my staff laid out where the uh, sanitary sewer line runs underneath the runway because I didn't want to break that because we're going to be working right on top of it. Um, so all that work took place today. They're going to be moving stuff in over the next few days. Um, so you're going to start seeing things appear. Um, and then Monday, 3-1 closes. Um, Tuesday, 3-1 starts to go away. Uh, they're going to start ripping it up. So 3-1 will be closed in some form or another all the way up until May 1st. From April 4th to April 21st, all runways are closed. That's because we're working in the intersection. On May 1st, from Charlie North reopens. So 624 reopens, and we are going to relocate 1331 to the north of where it is. We will have a 4,000 foot long runway so that CAL FIRE can conduct operations. Uh, they were adamant about starting on May 1st. Um, we're actually having to pay a little bit of money um, in addition on the contract because we had to speed some things up. Because of what? We had to speed some things up. Oh, oh money on the uh, yeah. reconstruction contract. Um, after May 1st, they'll be finishing the south end of the pavement, and all paving operations will be complete the day before the air show. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I told them they're good, but they got to have pavement to land on. They're not going to take those planes in the dirt. Um, on the Friday or the Thursday? Probably the Thursday. So That's we will be totally paved at that point. We have our air show. After the air show, they will still need to do some electrical work. And then um, the way new pavement works is it has to have a cure time before they put the permanent markings on. Otherwise, the permanent markings bring up large chunks of pavement. Uh, we went through that when we did the sewer seal. I've, I think maybe Dean might remember because um, I took him out there with me and was pulling my hair out as I was picking up sheets like this of my runway. Um, so there will be a time sometime, I want to see towards the end of July or August, where we will be closing it once again to repaint it, um, and that will be finished. So we're going to have a construction meeting in the morning, um, nail down some other details. The April 4th to April 21st uh, closure is locked in stone. That cannot move so that my, my businesses can plan on getting customers in early and, and work around that. that. That's the least we can do. Um, and I appreciate everybody's patience. I know this is not an ideal situation. I don't know any other way to replace the runway other than build another one next to it. Well, this one's open and we couldn't do that. And we need to remove, and it's not something that I can have them do at night in little sections. We are removing six feet down for the length of the runway. And we are rebuilding it from there so that it will last and be a durable runway. And we get away from all these problems that we've had in the past with the emergency, 20,000 here, 40,000 here, to go fix the sinkholes that occur out there. Um, so this is a big deal. Are you gonna do that for the, the whole rest of the runway? That's correct. I believe there's an overlay from Bravo South, but. The, the runway itself gets reconstructed. From Bravo South, though, will not be dug up. No, 
that is getting a significant overlay. Okay. Did you say April 4th or 4th? 4th. One, one whole month of shutdown? 18 days. A total. Shutdown. Total. <clears throat> and what happens if it rains? We're all done. <laughs> and and since we're starting on Monday, you might want to have your arc done by then because it's <laughs> Murphy's Law. <laughs> but um, rain would significantly impact the project. So okay. I'd be okay if it stopped raining for a while. At least through April 21st. Yes. Well, I'm hoping May 1st. Let me get a 3-1 back. Okay. Any, anything else? Um, that's all I got on that one. Any, anybody have any other questions? What, what, what other activities other than the FBO is needed a, need to run on a daily basis? Well, I mean, we have a skydive operation that won't be able to fly. We have gliders that won't be able to fly. Uh, we have private pilots that won't be able to fly. Uh, we have instructors that won't be able to conduct instruction. Um, this is a significant yeah. trauma, but we've known about this for a long time. I've been working towards this for the eight years I've been in this position. I've been talking very clearly about it for the last four years that we are getting closer and closer. And it's something that can be planned to work around. Um, it's not ideal. I first to admit it's not an ideal situation. But um, we have to replace the runway. The other choice was, and some of you saw those letters, I know Ruth has from the state, is shut it down permanently. So it was that bad. Who's the contractor this time? Uh, Granite Rock. No, because the runways are closed. They have to operate from the runways. What was the question? I'm sorry. Will Eris be able to operate? No. Oh. And you're saying no? Yeah, they're not cleared to take off from the ramp. They have to air taxi to a runway to take off. They couldn't get over to one end of 2-4? The runways are closed. Okay. Obviously, I, I, I will work with everybody to do yeah. as much as I possibly can. Um, there's some air shows that are pretty close to this, and we may need to get some people out, so I'll try to open up a little bit of yeah. runway yeah. to get them out. Um, I, I, I'll be able to get the Mustangs out. I don't think I'll be able to get them back in, though. And they go knowing that. Where would Granite be accessing the airport from? Uh, primarily on the west side, um, but at some point we'll be um, hopefully receiving permission from Mr. Swank again to bring trucks through uh, that way so we're not uh, destroying all the rest of the pavement with long haul routes. Okay. Any, any other questions? Okay. Uh, thank you. Item 8B is Air Show 2016. Uh, preparations for the Air Show are almost complete. We did receive contact back from the Navy um, saying that uh, it would be permissible for the Navy to participate. Um, we're attempting to contact the F-18 again to uh, get them back. Um, we're considering other options at this time. Uh, the committee's having a meeting tomorrow at 2 um, to uh, go over where we're at to date. Um, I've significantly changed the advertising model from the past. Um, I've reduced the amount of television advertising we do in the Central Coast area, and I've uh, instead use those dollars for radio advertising in the Bay Area. Um, so we will be advertising this year on KGO, KSF, KSFO, and the new country station, Nash. 
Um, I've even made arrangements on the practice day for a media flight for the KGO afternoon anchors um, that are on the radio for about seven hours, I think. Um, so they ought to be talking us up quite well for what's arranged. So um, I'm hoping this makes the difference. Um, it is a significant change from the past. So at this point, we have tried everything and thrown the kitchen sink at it. Okay, any question? Okay, thank you. Item uh, eight, old business item C, 8C is electric campaign. Um, so it's supposed to be our electronic marketing campaign. That's our website and our uh, little uh, geofence uh, program, advertising program. So our, our geofence advertising program, if you remember, we um, committed to that through June. Um, and what I was doing was drawing fences around the football stadiums so that anybody using a mobile device in the football stadium accessing certain websites, they would see an ad for Hollister. So a successful, um, a successful pro program of, of this uh, apparently has a CTR value of 0 0.04. Ours is 0 0.08. Um, so we're twice what they consider successful. We had 452,837 people see our ad. Um, in a mobile device within the geofenced areas. Um, out of those 452,837 of them, 380 people clicked on it to move on to our website. Our website from November to February um, had uh, 1,877 visits. Of those, 1,300 of them were in English, um, and 500 of them were unknown because they didn't sp specify in their computer what language um, they did. Can I ask a quick question? When you say our website, this is that one? Hollister.org. Dot org. <clears throat> okay, thanks. Um, the 70% 70, 70 of those 1,800 were new people looking at it, um, people that had not been there before. So earlier you asked what I think made the difference between the 12. I, I think this contributed significantly to that. We've now rolled the electronic marketing campaign into a general, we're available to develop. Uh, we have land available, come visit Hollister um, mode that we had set up to roll into. That changeover happened on Super Bowl. So we went away from our Super Bowl ad into our normal ad. Um, and then I believe April 1st, we're going to roll it into the air show um, ad and uh, modify the geofences so that the South County event, the Dream Machine up at uh, Half Moon Bay, uh, those type things, Hiller Aviation Museum, uh, those type areas, anybody will see our air show ad. So. All in all, I think it's making a difference. Um, I did budget money for this in next year's budget, um, as you saw. And uh, we'll see what the council thinks, and we'll go from there. And I'll keep these numbers up, uh, updating these numbers through uh, June that we're committed to do it. I have one question. You, you s said that you stopped the geofencing around the, the uh, football, football fields, I guess. And you change to marketing, build build your new business here. What, yeah. Is there a geofence around something in particular? Or? There are several. Um, what, 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 what are they around? Now? All of Scottsdale, Arizona. Um, well, that's our market, right? Through the fence? Okay. No, I'm just, just um, curious. Uh, there's what some you? up in the around Silicon Valley. Hmm. Um, and then we're programmed to do uh, Paris and... Um, uh, the what's the biannual air show in England? Uh, it's not Lockerbie. It's mm. it's an R 
or isn't it? It'll come to me in you know half an anyway, hour. Anyway, we're programmed to put a geofence around that event too because there's a lot of business type stuff that goes on at those. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> nope. Okay, that takes care of old business. Item nine is new business. Item 9A is 4th of July. Um, so there was some interest in moving the city firework uh, program out to the airport um, due to the fact that where the fireworks used to land is now becoming houses. And um, the airport's a little better situated to handle a large amount of traffic than that area of the city. <clears throat> so... Uh, I did had a preliminary meeting with the uh, former city clerk, uh, Jerry Johnson, and uh, Brenda of HTA. Um, and initially, Jerry wasn't too excited about moving it. But the more we talked, the more she realized, hey, this is a good idea. Um, so uh, she talked to, she wanted to talk to other people about it and get a response before a decision was made. She contacted me and said all the response she was receiving was positive. So um, I have a meeting set up with her and the fireworks uh, guy in the next couple of weeks to kind of plan out what's going on. And we're kind of envisioning viewing on both sides of the airport. Um, so we would bring people in on the uh, weeds uh, over there in front of Dean's place. And we'd also bring people onto the ramp and we'd launch from about somewhere near the AWOS across so that towards swanks so that uh, everybody could see it. And that spreads your traffic load out to two different areas, gives us a ton of parking everywhere for everybody. Um, actual, so uh, I think it'll be a good deal. We will need to close the airport for an hour. Well, that's why I wanted an hour there. The show's only 20 minutes. I'm going to spend 40 minutes cleaning up before I reopen it. I only have to clean up the pavement. I don't have to pick those strings up out in the mud. That was, in fact, that was one of the things that Jerry liked the best. <laughs> We're not a children's sports field, so the clay and the strings can decompose out there in the weeds. <clears throat> and we don't, we don't have to worry about fires. No. What about Redondo? You said that it would be well done. It would be. It will be done by then. Yeah. July fourth, it should be done. Oh, no. It'll be done by then. So I personally think this is a good thing. It's another. Um, example of us being good neighbors to the community and it's a minimum of uh, impact to the airport so well, maybe people will figure out where the airport is anyway <laughs> okay any more questions <clears throat> item 9b trailer parking fees so all of a sudden um, trailers have cropped up out at the airport in mass. Um, it was brought to my attention by a tenant. Hey, why are all these trailers out here? Um, there's probably six or eight cargo trailers, flatbed trailers, and other trailers that are just parked out there at the airport. Um, I'm not totally against that, um, but I think since we're a business, we're an enterprise fund, uh, and we charge people to park their airplanes at the airport. We ought to be park charging them to park their trailers at the airport. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I just wanted to have this discussion with you in this level. See what your thoughts were before I spent a bunch of time researching numbers and, and, and moving down this road. Um, so I'm just looking for general direction from you as a group to see what you think about it are these trailers uh from the businesses or from general tenants well 
They all belong to general tenants, but some of those general tenants run businesses. Okay. What's their orientation to these trailers? I'm sorry? So what, these trailers fly? No. No, they don't fly. <laughs> No, what's the orient air orientation? Do what I meant is that uh, some are of the they businesses to a plane, or they're just some of them owned? carry uh, tools and spare parts for their airplane repair business. Uh, some of them, I think, in fact, one of them that kind of looks like a Conestoga wagon actually brought an airplane down the other day. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, and some of the flatbeds, um, some are used for cars, some are used for aircraft parts. Uh, they they are airplane related. I'm not a, against what they are. Um, probably my flatbeds. Uh, we do put an airplane on it, but I, I don't think that justifies anything free. I'm just saying that <clears throat> if you got a trailer there other than air oriented or connected, it's like the I hate to say the CDF or whatever. I don't see why we got fire trucks and bulldozers. They don't fly, <laughs> but they're out there. But that's a personal. Anyway. That's my feeling. They've got to be air oriented, somehow or connected. You know. But the fee, whether they are or not, so should be probably a fee. But then wouldn't that bring up the issue of the limos there? I mean. Well, well the limos are, are used in the business. Um, it is part of their business. They're used daily with that business. I consider the limos more part of that business. Okay. An issue it could bring up is, hey, I want to park my RV out there, and I would urge us to say no because um, mm -hmm. the FAA won't go for that. But trailers that are associated with what they're doing, um, airplanes, glide, you know, there's glider trailers out there. Um, now the glider trailers, since there were tie downs, I wouldn't think that, but. Um, I just, it's getting out of hand. And um, I, I think if we set an appropriate fee, it will be a way to control what's going on. Well, I, I think if the trailer's related to aviation business that's at the airport, um, we should at least allow them one. Uh, personal tenants that just park their trailer out there just because there's room, I could see a fee for that. I, it, I, it, I'm good with I'm good two. with them having more than one as long as they're parking it inside the hangar they're renting from me. Right. Because I mean we 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 are in the business of renting space. Right. So I could also see if we allow them to have a parking space along with their their um, lease that they're not paying for. Somebody would say, "Well, I own the area in front of my building, so you can't put anything there in the air show." I've had people try that in the past. Um, it doesn't go very far with me because the lease says what you're leasing from us. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so the lease would have to be changed. I that I would see that as kind of a slippery slope. Myself. Yeah. Um, Could that uh, type of storage, if you will, uh, be hazardous? I mean, in other words, you know, you have these trailers. Uh, in various locations within your hangar, could that potentially cause some problems? Let's say if you had a fire of some sort, could that? No more than airplanes full of half gas. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's but the most dangerous thing in there. So they're stored inside the, the hangar? No, they're parked mm -hmm. out. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And The only potential and, thing you might have is a safety issue. Well, not really. No. Um, I mean, obviously, if somebody puts a trailer full of gunpowder in there, it's a whole new story. <laughs> But um, the, of the things that are permitted to be there, the most dangerous thing is the fuel and the aircrafts in the hangars. And Mike, who owns this trailer that boys parked out here motorhome? I'm beside, sorry? Beside the hangar out here. Who, the, who one, that belong to? the one beside uh, right, that, Pike's Dairy? That belongs to a gentleman that works for Mike Farrell. And he lives in That's his commuter car. Right. He lives in Oregon. He comes down here a couple of weeks a month and works and yeah. lives and moves it over to the Elks when he's here. And it's always parked at the near the hangar. Mm -hmm. That's been arranged by Hugh Bickle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm just wondering if it's always there. I know it's when I come here. 
Yes. What about if, if a person has their plane on the ramp and needs a trailer? They can't put it in the hangar. <laughs> All right. Which so, hmm? I, I, I think she was hypothetical. Hypoth Hypothetically talking about somebody who has only a tie down and wanting a trailer. Uh, I, I think the precedent is set to, to develop a fee. I mean, we charge airplanes. Well, I think, we charge I think there's glider two, trailers. There's two things, because I think in addition to a fee, I think they ought to not be like, I mean, I'm one of the guys who brought this up because I go over in my side of the airport and there, there's a trailer parked at one, each end of the uh, row of tea hangers and on the, the, the furthest row of tea hangers there's one parked in front of the tea hanger on the corner and there's three trailers and basically I think it looks like crap. I don't like those trailers there. They're blocking the, the vehicle access around the end there. You have to go, go out onto the taxiway to get around. During when we had the airplanes parked over there I couldn't, the only way to get Conveniently to my hangar, I had to go to the far end, of, you know, drive the far end, and then it was blocked because there's trailers there. So I went on the taxiway to get to my hangar. I mean, and I just think it looks bad. So I think there's two issues. They, they ought to be parked somewhere. We ought to have a place. You want a hangar, you know, set aside some place. I mean, excuse me, you want a trailer, park them all in one spot. But just having them randomly around T hangers, I think, is, is not a good, good idea. Uh, maybe more inconvenient, but I'm sorry. You know, like you said, we're this is an airport, airplanes, not not trailers. So that's my opinion. Um, so I, I I think in addition to charging a fee, and I agree with that, uh, we ought to figure out where they ought to really be parked, because because I just think it makes the place look junky. That's my opinion. Thank you. Anybody else have opinions? I, I could I could see your point as far as having them parked on the ramp or the taxiway into the hangars. Um, I do agree that we probably should have a designated area for trailers, possibly against the fence uh, as we first drive in. Where I think Min had the A26 stage there for a while. Um, at least you had the wings and all that stage here along, along that mm -hmm. area where it wouldn't affect aircraft operation or safe operation around the hangars. Um, as far as a fee, I'm on the fence on that. Um, like I say, if the business requires, if an airport business requires a trailer for their personal business, I could see that. If Say if I had a trailer because I don't have a business at the airport and wanted to park it out there, I could see being charged a fee. Be no different than storing it, you know, at a yard. But a business, I think we would be. How can I put it? It would be more detrimental to a business to have to pay an extra fee to operate on the business on the airport because they have trailers. Because that's part of the business. Correct. Yeah, so if, basically what I'm saying, if the trailer supports their business, mm -hmm. I don't agree with the fee because they have it there. Well, They're already operating a business on the grounds, and that trailer is part of that business. So, so I guess I, I don't quite get it because if they have a business there, they presumably are leasing a facility of some sort to run their business in. Correct. And if they now wanted something else beyond what they're leasing, basically a place to park a trailer, I, I don't think we should just allow them to, to well, do that for free. Okay, what about their employees? Are we going to start charging them for parking spots for their cars if they have multiple employees? If there's Actually, <laughs> you know, I, I, I just was in discussions about a new hangar to be developed, and their intention is to put a parking lot on buildable land. And we will be charging them because it's buildable land. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it, it's kind of a catch twenty two. You know, do we start charging the businesses that operate on the on the airport that already have an existing lease for parking area, or 
you know, do we kind of turn a blind eye a little bit to the businesses? And if the trailer is not directly related to a operating business on the airport and a personal person just uh, wants to park a trailer there, I could see charging for that. You know, say I had a, a 20 foot mm -hmm. trailer that I wanted to leave at the airport. I don't operate a business. I should have no business. If it can't fit in my hangar, I have no business just leaving a trailer there. Well, okay, but I, I still don't. The fact that either if you're running a business at the airport or, or for whatever reason you have a trailer there, I, I think you need to, to rent the space. I mean, I, I don't think whether it's associated with the business or not is germane. Uh, we, we allow them if they're associated with the business, because if you need it to run the business, then you know, you gotta have your trailer there. Uh, but I, I don't think that means that you shouldn't still have to rent that amount of space for, for to running your business. That's my opinion. I, I, I don't, in other words, I, I wouldn't wanna make a distinction between, well, this guy's got a business here and this guy doesn't, and it's the same size trailer and the same thing, it's like, well, how come he can, park here without renting that spot, but I do have to pay. You know, I mean, that, that gets icky, I think. I think you gotta be consistent. That's just my opinion. But you, you asked for a discussion, so that's what we're having. Um, it's kind of hard for me to, because I don't go out there that often. But are these trailers part of a business that's on the tarmac or you know, what you mentioned, they're interrupted to the aircrafts. I, I don't know where these trailers. Well, it seems to me, I guess what I'm saying, they don't, they, don't, they don't look like they're associated with the business, but I mean, I can't tell because they're, they're all enclosed. Well, well, they're like a little box. Yeah, what I, what well, I'm I know saying, for a fact some are, some are. What yeah. I'm saying is that... Some businesses keep their trailer inside their hangar. But see, to me, there's nothing wrong with inside the hangar. They're leasing no, the hangar. No, I have no trailer. problem with that. What bothers me is it's an airport. It's got to be air-oriented again. That is correct. That. And it can't be disruptive to the rest of the people of the, that use aircraft. Like, I don't know what he's talking about, but he's talking about one each other. I understood that, and he's trying to come around or something. Well, it's not that's not, I'm that's trying not. to drive around. It wasn't my... They weren't blocking the airplane, but... Yeah, but it's still, it's, it, I think if you got a trailer there, there may be... You know, I was thinking when you talk about businesses, businesses, as you come in the main gate, all those buildings and businesses, whatever's there, there should be a, maybe a location for them to park their trailers somewhere and not be disrupted to everybody else. But once you get onto the tarmac, the runways, the, the hangars and all that, I don't think there should be any trailer that's disrupted to the rest of the tenants or their aircraft or their vehicles. Well, there are, there's at least two businesses that I know of on my side one Margaret and one Min, but I, I don't, I don't know who who actually is associated with those trailers. So, but there also seems to be adequate land out there to put a trailer park, if that's the right word, <laughs> where there's you can line four or five up somewhere in the grass area, or the dirt area, that designated area, which wouldn't be too inconvenient to go get it when you need it when it's only. 100 yards, 50 yards away. I think I got the general gist of the discussion, so I will bring this item back with a little more well thought out and probably with the layout plan showing a designated parking area. Is, um, it, uh, is it possible to, to, to go out and visit that area just to kind of get a, a better idea as sure. to what we're sure. talking about? I'll take you out there. Okay. Call me anytime. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay. It's not easy to just drive out there um, without gate codes and stuff. So. No, no, I understand. I just want to make sure that uh, I'm not in the middle of a, you know, landing uh, pattern here. And I'll take care of you. Sure. <laughs> I don't want to be there either. <laughs> <laughs> Any more comments, questions? Okay. Is there something else you were wanting to talk about? No. Okay. Well, that takes care of new business. And I guess what we have left is items for next agenda. Uh, 
We're done with the Super Bowl, right? Yep. Mowing and spraying and yep. probably done with that. Okay. I'd Oops. say 8A, 8B, 9A, 9B. 9A and B. Okay. Does anybody have anything else that they would like to have talked about? No? 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 Can we have an update on the CDF or Cal Fire? Sure. On the new place or their existing? <laughs> well, or both. Overall. Okay. And I'm sure if somebody thinks of something, just talk to Mike and he'll, he'll add it. All right. Our next meeting date is March 23rd. That's correct. Okay. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to uh, adjourn the meeting. So move. Second. Been moved and seconded to adjourn. Who? It was uh, uh, Robbie moved it and Gordon seconded it. Okay. Uh, any discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you.